Hey, hello there. Welcome to Talking with Tony here on YouTube now. It's worth repeating again since this is season 14 of Talking with Tony. The previous 13 years to access Talking with Tony, you had to be a subscriber to WOW in the Atlanta market. But that's no longer a thing. We're now reaching uh, worldwide, actually. I was going to say uh, countrywide. Today, our guest is from his home in San Francisco, California, our West Coast correspondent, Brian Lundquist. Brian, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Tony. What's going on? Well, I was kind of going to go there with you. You're from Atlanta originally, and I imagine the anxious level meter is pretty high at the moment because in a couple of hours, the Braves will be playing game four, facing elimination. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go on record right now and say I believe they're going to win today. I just, I've just i had that feeling all day long. And that's and that's saying something because they haven't had a whole lot of luck in Philadelphia in, the, in these postseason games the last couple of years. But uh, I do believe Strider is going to throw his uh, – strong con contest and i think they're going to get that back to atlanta and you were much younger uh right before well maybe while you were at auburn i don't remember the exact year you got to auburn or maybe it's just before you had Auburn. but it's a similar circumstance to they put the braves played the cubs and they had to win a game four on a saturday night in chicago to get it back to atlanta and i was so excited they did they tied up that series it came back to atlanta i believe it is uh 2003 but they dropped game five, Brian, at home against Atlanta and the Cubs moved on to the National League Championship Series, which I think was against the Marlins and the whole, you know, Barman thing. So, I, I, but let's take it one game at a time. The, I do feel like they're going to win today. I, before we talk any college football, I want to get your thoughts on that as well. Well, I want to, I'm curious about their, you know, their bats. Uh, Braves offense woke up late in game two. Seemed like an attitude and a demeanor changed. Every all the energy changed at home in the stadium. I was really hopeful they'd carry that into Philadelphia. It's a tough place to play. You know, I mean, yeah, of course. I, I, I my gut says that they pull one out tonight and we go to Game Five. Uh, I, I, I do feel that way. I wish that this was a seven-game series, though. To be honest, um, I wish that you know, with it just seems so abrupt for as long as the baseball season is. Um, no, like whatever the outcome is of this series, um, I really, I really wish it was uh, seven games for the division series. I think that'd be better for baseball overall. You so. have a point from the standpoint of what is the regular season for? If you have teams like the Dodgers who win their division, I think they finished sixteen games ahead of their opponent, the Diamondbacks, and got swept by the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks were able to play a couple of days after the regular season was over. While the Dodgers had to wait, like the Braves, basically a week, I, I can see teams not being in sync in that, in that situation. So I'm not complaining. That, and obviously, I'm a Yankees fan and overall, but I'm a Braves fan in the National League. I'm not making the excuse for that, but I just feel like we, we need to restudy this because something's not adding up when you get that much time off. And that first game, the Braves didn't have any offense. And as you pointed out to it really took them to late in game two to get cranked up. So I feel like they didn't benefit at all from the time other than being able to line up their pitching. I will say this one thing, Wheeler pitches a lot better in Atlanta than Nola does, but Nola pitches against the Braves very well in Philadelphia. And we saw that in game three. Now, look, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of confidence if I'm a Phillies fan and Ranger Suarez. And I think the Braves definitely have a better pitcher going tonight, but that doesn't always mean everything, but I feel pretty confident with Strider. What do you think the late game tactics are going to be? Are we going to see if Atlanta's in a pitching crisis? Do they, do they start pulling starter early? Do we go deep into the bullpen? You know, is it all, do you pull out all the stops if you're managing this team right now? I think you have to. And I think, you know, he, at Los Angeles was faced with similar situation because of all their injuries to their starting pitchers or pitchers being arrested. And they had to basically do the same thing and uh, didn't help them at Lance Lynn, you know, who gives up a lot of home runs, gave up, you know, three or four home runs himself. But I think Atlanta will be in that situation. I think the Braves are missing Kyle Wright also. We thought, you know, Kyle Wright was really coming along before he was hurt. And let's not forget about Mike Sor Soroka, but, you know, still with Freed, with Strider, this is this is very capable, and I and I believe they'll get another day off, Brian, they, they, before Game Five if they win tonight, and that will help everything. So I think that's why everybody in the bullpen's available, all the high leverage guys tonight, and then they'll get a day rest, and then I think they would be available also for a Game Five, which would be on Saturday. 
you know, I listened to a podcast the other day that was talking about the Philly fanatic and how they were uh, forever ranked the, you know, the number one mascot in all of sports. And the Phillies got a great deal on that uh, paying, paying the owner of the fanatic. They should have, should have taken the deal early, but they did it. Um, let's, let's shut them all down tonight. I'm ready to shut the fanatic up, shut Bryce Harper up and go Braves. He is a good mascot, but I'm right there with you. I totally understand. Before we get into too much of uh, the football picking with uh, with Brian, got to congratulate Brian. Brian's coming off a great week, and he's now over 500. Brian's 11 and 10. At one time, Brian was four games under 500 picking, so Brian's actually very hot. Danny Arp is hot. Danny Arp, college football analyst, is 19 and 12 against the spread on the season. I had my worst week uh, last week. I fell to 22 and 13, which is still really, really good. I went in 18 and 9. But I split uh, eight games, and Stormy Weathers is four and two. Uh, Danny's five star. He, we always get a five star from Danny. It's Florida State minus eighteen. We're gonna run down all of Danny's picks, run down Stormy's picks, and run down my picks, and run down Brian's picks a little bit later. But Brian is here, our West Coast correspondent, and since Danny's picking Florida State with his five star, I thought we'd start with that game, uh, Brian, and let you get a shot at that Syracuse at Florida State with Florida State favored by eighteen. Yeah, uh, well, I saw 17 and a half. I like that better than 18, but I'll, t- I'll still take 18. Home game for FSU. You know, Syracuse, Syracuse started strong at, you know, 3-0, and but they've gotten smacked the last couple outings. So um, North Carolina really taking it to them. So I, I think uh, FSU is bringing it, and I'll take them at 18. Fair enough. Uh, Purdue is hosting Ohio State. Ohio, this has been in West Lafayette has been a house of horrors for Ohio State through the years. Some big time losses, including with uh, my guy Urban Meyer in 2018. That's a big number, 19 and a half points. So uh, Ohio State's favored by. How do you see it? Well, you know, this game, Purdue hasn't scored less than 20 points on the season, but Ohio State defense also hasn't given up uh, more than 17 points. So something's got to give in this game and um i'll take the home team in this one 19 and a half is a bunch of points ohio state still gets the win of course but i'll take purdue to beat that spread and i'll release my first selection at this time too i'm gonna go the over 50 and a half in that game i don't have a side thing but he's right about my defense and i'm where every 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 episode i wear a, a jersey of one of the buckeyes it's tyreek williams here I've got like 11. Uh, so I guess for episode 12, I'm going to have to go out and buy some more. Thank goodness there's an internet. Here's the thing. I need, Brian, I'm going to need you to have a few kids, some, somebody I can leave these jerseys to. As you know, I don't have any kids. So, uh, and I don't have a whole lot of friends that uh, uh, are Ohio State fans. So I'm going to have to leave these jerseys or maybe one of my viewers will contact us and say, hey, I'll take those when you're dead because I could be dead next year. You just never, never know. And I've got a plethora of uh, 2024 Ohio State football jerseys uh tennessee the volunteers favored by four this weekend and what some people believe is the best game on the slate there's another one that's got my attention and it's out there and you're cl- closer in your area and we're going to get to that shortly but texas a&m i have a hard time figuring out texas a&m yeah i do too this one's tough but uh you know tennessee i think you know, barely being favored at home uh, by, by, you know, four, this one is, is, you know, really, really a wash. I think as much as I hate to pick in favor of Jimbo, I'm still sour from that FSU Auburn national title game. I think A&M comes into Rocky top and shuts down the, all the balls. Okay. So you'll go with the uh, Texas A&M plus four. And uh, you know the balls a little bit because you got a, a master's degree from the University of Tennessee when you were up there. We did have a great memory of that 2013 season when Auburn played there and ran all over them. It was great to be able to visit with you and sit with you for a while there. That that was that was a neat thing. You and I have done very well together on Auburn away games. There was that game at South Carolina and Columbia. This game, I think maybe Hugh Freeze needs to take us both on the road with him. What do you believe? Uh, well, yeah, for sure. Let's let's go on the road to Auburn games, but don't take. I love Knoxville, by the way, but that color orange is just oh. the ugliest in in college sports, oh. really. It's great if you go on hunting. I mean, but you know, as far as yeah, wearing for to the game and all, not not so much. Okay, yeah. so I hinted a little bit a little while ago, uh, about a minute ago, about this Oregon Washington game. Two teams that are national championship contenders. The Pac-12 has really performed, considering that it's disbanding. Keep that in mind. Two quarterbacks who are both Heisman Trophy. 
I think Penix would be the front runner, probably just a little bit over Caleb Williams, and Bo Nix is in the area as well. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be a wonderful contest. I'm going to have the popcorn at home watching it and all. You're the analyst. You have to make the pick here. Washington is favored by three at home, and that's a tough place to play football. Yeah, it gets loud in that stadium with the overhang, the way they've got it there. Uh, game day, when's the last time game day was in Seattle at home at UW? I don't, I'm sure it's happened at some point in the last few years, but I can't name what it is. I think uh, this game is going to be a major shootout with the honestly the bigger thing is the the over under i mean i what i saw was 67 probably in that range right now Mm -hmm. that's right i'm taking i'm taking the over in this game for sure but i like the ducks to come in and and uh upset at home ruin the party for uw okay so you're on oregon plus three and bo nicks the former Auburn quarterback it is a hard i I learned this the most difficult way uh this jersey could almost pass as a nebraska jersey if it weren't for the ohio state when when i was in uh, college I used to pick for a whole fraternity at at Auburn and they played the same three games on a parlay card every single week. And it was my selections. And, and uh, this one time on a Saturday night at Washington, I'd already won two early games and all we needed to hit against the book and every brother in that, I mean, every single brother in the fraternity was going to hit a three team parlay. If, Wa- if Washington did not cover against Nebraska and Washington was at home and, you know, Nebraska in the 90s, good, 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 you know, really good. But that night, blown out. I mean, we knew at halftime we had no chance at all. And, you know, forget about everybody being so happy we were 2-0 and going into that game. Everybody was just mad at me all the time. Now, there were other weeks during those two seasons that I did that that, that we collected – but I got a lot of grief because Nebraska, when the final score was up, Nebraska was nowhere close to covering the number. It just got worse as the night went on. Brutal. But I do think it'd be good for college football for Nebraska to be good again. I'm bummed that Scott Frost couldn't do it. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think I would agree with you uh, completely. Okay, Wyoming and Air Force. Now, why did I choose this game? Because these two teams are off to a wonderful start this season, and it's a very compelling matchup. Air Force has that offense that not everybody sees, and it's hard to stop. Wyoming plays good defense, and they've got one of the nation's uh, best kickers also in Hoyland. Uh, I've always, speaking of Nebraska, they're coached by Craig Bowl, former longtime Nebraska assistant for Tom Osborne. Uh, they are catching. Ten and a half points at Air Force. What do you think? I mean, Air Force has won all their games by a lot more than ten and a half points, except for one, Sam Houston State at ten points. I'll take ten and a half. You'll take yeah. Wyoming? Okay. No, 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 no. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take I'll take Air Force to cover that ten and a half. I got you. I got you. There was but, one game. Was it Air Force playing UNL? It was Air Force playing somebody. They were actually behind at halftime, and yet they still won by more than 20 points. So they are explosive, even though they're a run-dominated team. Auburn is at LSU. We said Hugh Freeze should take us uh, to to LSU. I'm 2-0 in Baton Rouge. I'm not going back. I'm not going to risk that perfect record of going down there. Uh, 1993 was a wonderful memory. for Not only did Auburn go undefeated during the regular season, but LSU was – like third game of the year and was like the first test. And we were about to find out, are, are we any good at all? And we found out we were very good by beating them there on a, on a Saturday night. I don't think we'll win the game, but I have to get your opinion on, will they stay within 11? Will they stay within the number? Man, this game is so hard to pick. Cause I don't know who these teams, who either of these teams are. They're both a little confusing. LSU's looked good. They, they barely lost the shootout with Ole Miss after, you know, who knows what the opener against FSU really means. Auburn somehow showed up against Georgia, but coming off a bye week, can they get the passing game going? That's the big one for me. I also like the over in this game. I saw 60 and a half. Uh, I don't know. 11 is a lot. Give me Auburn. Okay. Worry go to that. Uh, North Carolina is playing Miami of Florida and Miami may have been looking ahead to North Carolina last week. And we all know what happened at the end of that game and they just needed to take a knee and they didn't. This line has me as a, uh, as a believer in North Carolina has me very concerned, only favored by four. I would think it should be a little bit higher. I think this is screaming trap to go with, uh, to go with Miami. What about you? 
Yeah, hundred percent. I don't understand how this game is only favorite at three. I mean, both of these teams have looked really good up until this blunder at Georgia Tech. So if you take that game out, then this line makes sense. So I, I get it from that point standpoint. I'll give it to the home team. Give me the Tar Heels. Okay, we'll give you the Tar Heels. A team I still call Southern Cal instead of USC because I think of USC as being in South Carolina as playing Notre Dame. These guys are rivals. Here's another one of these curious lines to me. Notre Dame is favored by two and a half. Notre Dame has a couple of losses. Southern Cal is undefeated. They have Caleb Williams defending Heisman Trophy where they have an offense that no one's been able to stop. Things happen at Notre Dame. I'm old enough to remember that all my life. And I got to, I got to be honest with you. I like uh, I like the I like the Irish at home, favored by two and a half. Even though that 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 to me that is screaming trap. They want you on USC with USC being undefeated. But you're the analyst today, so I get I let you have the pick. Yeah, well, we talked earlier about Tennessee going backwards. Notre Dame's been going backwards. I don't know how many years are we going to come into September and there's going to be a huge game at home for Notre Dame and they're going to be rocking and they're going to be singing that leprechaun theme song at the beginning of the game and you're going to go, this is the year that Notre Dame's going to get it done. And that would be wake up the echoes. Something's yeah. going to fall apart and they're just going nowhere. It's good. As Sam Hartman is playing, he finally threw some picks on the surface. If you look at the stat line between him and Caleb Williams at this game, they look pretty similar, uh, but I don't see the rest of Notre Dame backing up. So I'm going to go USC coming in to ruin the party at Notre Dame. All right. So no cheers, cheers for old Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes here. You don't, you don't, you don't get up. Send, send that thunder down the sky, the volleys and all that. You're not, you're not believing. Okay. That's I'm going, fair. going back to my high school roots. Okay. I, I, I swam for the Lassiter Trojans and our fight song was modeled after SC and we did the fight on you men of Troy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will say this. I think they have the best away Jersey in college football. Those, those pants, nice helmet also. I love Auburn's home jersey. I really do. I think it's spectacular. I like Ohio State's home jersey. There's a few other home jerseys that I could point out. But in my opinion, that away jersey for Southern Cal is as good as it gets. I don't know. Those Colorado helmets were pretty fire last week, though. <laughs> and, and Colorado gave SC fits earlier this year, too, when they played them. I got to get your opinion on a couple of NFL games, obviously through the Falcons in here for you because of uh, you, regionally and you being a Falcons fan. Now the Falcons are favored by two and a half and they're coming off a uh, last second victory against the, the Texans when they had to find it, they found it, Brian. Yeah. Uh, I say they keep the momentum going this week too, after a tough loss in, in London against the home team Jags, they, you know, turned it around against CJ Stroud and off to a great season there so uh yeah give me the falcons at two and a half he wants the falcons and what about the dallas cowboys at the chargers the cowboys could not have looked worse out there where you are in san francisco getting just drilled by the 49ers and now they're going to play another california team i guess it's the los angeles chargers now some of this gets ridiculous these days there'll be as many cowboys fans there though as chargers fans cowboys favored by two and a half uh I'll be honest with you, this is one of my selections. Uh, I'm, I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I didn't want to agree with you on this one. I don't know why. I like you, but it's nice not to have the same picks. But if there's one thing that the NFL has done to me is uh, taught me that what happens one week can be a completely different team the next week. And I'm just going to say that the 49ers are so for real and legit that this Cowboys defense shows up and the offense does enough to get it done this week and they come back, bounce back with a win. Well, with no digs, they have to put the pressure on the quarterback. They couldn't really do that against Purdy and the 49ers. They're going to have to be able to do that against the Chargers to have success. All right, now it comes to the time of the program where I release all of my picks, 22 and 13 on the season. I'm going to start with a Friday night special. Brian mentioned Colorado a little while ago. As many of you know, I'm writing a fictional book right now about a baseball player. Where does he go to school? He goes to Stanford. I'm going to be on the Stanford Cardinal plus 12. A little bit of a heart play there against Colorado. I just feel like Colorado has been in so many show-me games of late that they may be in for a little bit of a down spot here against a very bad Stanford team. 
and I'm counting on Stanford to keep it close. This Stanford team, they didn't do name, image, and likeness the last couple of years. They just started with that. David Shaw only took one player in the transfer portal, and we're seeing the ramifications, plus the high academic uh, standards. They lost Walker Lyons, who was their best spot. He was their top guy coming into this past class, five-star. And when Shaw left, he's a tight end. He uh, he actually decommitted, and he's going to be at Southern Cal. He'll be a freshman uh, next year. Keep an eye on him. I mentioned earlier one of my plays over 50 and a half in the Ohio State Purdue game. I'm going back with UCLA plus three and a half this week. I went with UCLA last week, and they came through. One of the reasons I'm going with it, Jake finds the most adorable bear leaning up on the L to put up for their force, and all. he'll bring that one back. But UCLA's got a legitimate defense, Brian. I'm on Colorado State plus seven and a half at home against Boise State. My last college game is Notre Dame minus two and a half. I mentioned it a little while earlier. Jake's challenge here is he's got to find that leprechaun, that fighting Irish, the guy who has his fist up and stuff. That's an adorable guy to me. So I've got the Notre Dame fighting Irish. Give me the Baltimore Ravens minus three and a half as an NFL play. And then I mentioned the Dallas Cowboys minus two and a half. So I'm not going with as many plays this week. I'm only going with seven. But those are my seven. I want to run down Bryant's. Uh, Brian, I didn't ask you a little while ago. Do you have a five-star pick in in those uh, in those picks? Favorite pick? Hmm. Yeah, give me SC over Notre Dame. <laughs> it's gonna go opposite of me, folks. There, there you go. You gotta love that. Okay, so Brian, and correct me, Brian, because I didn't write these down as you were saying. But you're on Florida State minus eighteen. He wish it was seventeen and a half. He's on Purdue plus nineteen and a half. He is on the away team. He's got the Aggies plus four as they visit Tennessee. He's going with Oregon plus three at Washington, even though that's a hard, hard place to play. He pointed out that Air Force has been beating people by more than this number, so he likes Air Force minus ten and a half against Wyoming. Uh, the over, really, we'll put that up as well. You like the over 60 and a half the most in that Auburn LSU game. But if you had to choose a side, you'd go Auburn plus 11. Uh, North Carolina uh, in, is playing uh, Miami of Florida, and uh, he didn't fall for that whole trap thing. It sounded like sounds like he wants no. You want North Carolina? We've got the Tar Heels minus four. You good with that? And then five star play, and Jake does a wonderful thing with the stars here. He's opposite of me. He's with the USC Trojans, and USC is plus two and a half. Also, though, he's gonna stick with these Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> I don't blame you. I mean. Maybe, maybe two wins in a row again. Falcons minus two and a half. And you are on the same side with me with the Dallas Cowboys minus two and a half. And because, like, you made the point in the NFL, things can change drastically. Want to run down Stormy's picks real quick? He's got Oregon plus three. He agrees with Brian. He's got North Carolina minus four. He agrees with Brian. He's got Southern Cal plus two and a half. He agrees with Brian. He throws in TCU minus six. That's against Brigham Young. That's a bonus game for him. And then the other two, he agrees with Brian. His five-star, Stormy's five stars, the Atlanta Falcons minus two and a half. A lot of love for the Falcons. And he's also on the Dallas Cowboys minus two and a half. So he and Brian are seeing, seeing things very similar. Uh, I got to – this does concern me a little bit when every not everybody's on all of them but we have a lot of agreements danny our college football analyst 19 and 12 is on florida state minus 18 purdue plus 19 and a half sounds familiar he goes with tennessee minus four oregon plus three so when you think about it all three of the guys stormy brian danny all on Oregon plus three. Don't walk, run if you're out there in Vegas to the window and take Washington. <laughs> These guys all on Oregon. Uh, he likes Wyoming plus ten and a half. I think that's going to be a very good football game, but I could see it coming down to the number. He's on Auburn plus 11. He's on North Carolina minus four. He's on Southern Cal plus two and a half. Guess what? He's on the Atlanta Falcons minus two and a half, and he's on the Dallas Cowboys Minus two and a half. There is a lot of agreement here in the group. Danny's five star once again is Florida State. Out of after you've heard the picks from so many of the other uh, people matching up with you, is there a game now that you go like, oh, that really kind of concerns me that all three of us are on? 
Uh, the only one that I feel really not great about is that Texas A and M Tennessee game. The rest I feel pretty pretty solid about. But it, let, let's let everybody know though that like none of us are in the same room. I, I didn't know anything about their picks. That's we true. all picked independently, and that just you read them all off. So you're the only one who knows everybody's picks. And that's true. And I and I do my picks first, but I give you guys a lot of the similar uh, games, and I don't always go with your games. Like I did throw Stanford in and. I did throw uh, people call them U Club, but use UCLA in and Colorado State in. I'm heavy on the underdogs in the college. Notre Dame is my only favorite in the college ranks, and then I've got my two picks. I've got uh, favorites in the NFL. I didn't do anything with that Falcons game, but I did take the Ravens and I did take the Cowboys. Uh, Brian, I've had a great year, 22 and 13 against the spread, but I'm coming off just splitting eight games, and in the past, I have to say. When I come off either a losing week or a 500 week, I start second guessing myself sometimes and I could crash and burn and be like a one in six kind of kind of week this week. Well, you've been doing this a long time. You're used to that feeling. Get over it. <laughs> that might drop in there for our guest relaying the zinger. OK, we have to before we let before we let uh, go, we still have you know a few more minutes here. Tell us about uh, the social kick and uh, you've got a great guest uh, episode that drops on Friday. So this is probably going to hit on the same day that your episode, most recent episode uh, drops as well. We do. So check us out on our website at social kick swim on Instagram and social kick swim uh, on the website. Uh, so we're talking to Claire Weinstein on this next episode. Claire Weinstein first person to knock off the great and maybe the greatest swimmer of all time, Katie Ledecky at home. Uh, beat her at the trials last year in 155, fourth fastest American ever. Uh, just committed to go swim for the Cal Bears, and uh, which is a big move in uh, women's recruiting and swimming because the Cal women haven't been uh, anywhere near as good as the men have been. So we got a great conversation with Claire. And then, uh, Tony, I did want to give a, a personal update, too, that may interest uh you know, your viewers and, and listeners. Um, so next year, the Olympics are in, are in Paris and uh, they're for the first time, the Paris Olympic Committee is holding a marathon on the actual marathon course that uh, that is for mass participation. So the public can go run it. But you have to win a, a spot to get into that race. Well, because of uh, a connection I have through work, I was able to submit an application and I actually just found out this week, I got a slot to race. I'm one of the 20,024 participants that will run at night on August 10th at 9 p.m. on the marathon course through Paris. So uh, yeah, excited to go to Paris next year. I've got the Boston Marathon in April and then the Paris Marathon coming in August and uh, the Olympics will for sure be a spectacle. I'm excited to go check it out. Uh, you and Brett Detmering are our favorite uh, marathon runners here on Talking With Tony. Brett is just did New York not long ago. He does New York, he does Boston, he does Chicago. That is uh, quite an accomplishment. Of course, Brian, you're an Ironman also. You've done the, the, the worlds out in uh, Kona. I have to ask you, is the, since this is the course that the marathon will take, place on will it also finish up in the olympic stadium like the generally does at the olympics they don't finish in the olympic stadium no but uh i can't remember what the name of the location is where i think it's a uh, Le- my french is terrible Le- les invalids les invalids okay. at that uh spot so uh but you do run by the the eiffel tower twice and um it's actually uh the course of the marathon is to honor the women's march on versailles which was to go and let Louis the 14th know that the problems and conditions for people, including women in the city of Paris were really poor and he needed to come back and fix it. And um, so it's, it's a, uh, it's celebrating uh, that March that was led by women. And Louis of course left to palace of Versailles, came back to Paris and then never, never left Paris. Um, and so the course actually goes from Paris out to Versailles and back to Paris again to honor that um, and commemorate that march. So very cool. Talking with Tony, we are known for sports. We are known for music. We are known for movies and we are known for books today, courtesy Brian Lundquist. We got a history lesson also, and we now <laughs> got a better idea of the geography of not only Finn, but what he's got coming up. I was kissed by a beautiful girl right at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> 
one time. Uh, you know her uh, very well. She's the most beautiful woman that's ever walked the surface of the earth. My wife, Tara, she just edges out Grace Kelly. As I just posted on my Facebook, I posted, this is the second most beautiful woman to ever walk the earth, Great Grace Kelly. I, I said something like, if Grace, if I would have been older, I know that I would have dated Grace Kelly. And a friend of mine responded like, I've always felt the same way about that too. And I went, yes, I'm sure she would be equally as impressed with us as we were with her. <laughs> that, that's the way. So what, so our uh, female viewers will know, and I just shouldn't have put you on the spot here. What about your dating situation right now, Brian? You got anything going <laughs> on? Uh, serious, we'll put you on the spot because you're a single guy in the thirties and folks, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. People are always like, he's single, he's thirties, what's wrong with him? There is nothing wrong with him, and there is nothing wrong with my producer, Jake Barton, who's similar in that situation and all. They're both uh, tremendous guys. So what's the update there uh, in, in the uh, romance situation? You think if I was dating anybody, I'd have time for your show? <laughs> <laughs> or I've always wanted you to be the bachelor. If you're still single, you'd be that golden bachelor guy that they talk about. And all that. They look like they're having a lot of fun in their 70s and all. Well, it's just never know. The great thing about being single, as I've told Brian and others, you never know what could be around the corner. I mean, that is absolutely the truth. I would be remiss if we didn't mention here on the uh, episode, like my thoughts, and I think all of our thoughts are with Israel this time, uh, particularly the Americans who have been lost and their families and others that are being held captive by the barbaric uh, activities and all. And uh, we just hope that uh, we can get those who are still being held and being missed, uh, you know, safely home to America, but to, to absolutely keep Israel in your uh, thoughts and in your prayers. Uh, you've competed all over the, the world, Brian, and, and swim, and you are a great Amer representative for our country. Did you ever feel unsafe anywhere? No, I don't think I ever did. Um, and I've competed in Asia and Europe and South America. Um, and no, no, I never really did. I did swim with some Israeli athletes who had their mandatory, um, you know, armed services, uh, mm -hmm. you know, commitment that they needed to to do. And um, and so I, you know, obviously, like this uh, situation has just reminded me about about that and about the the very real uh, life circumstances and conditions that people in that high conflict area of the world live in um same with the you know the ukrainian athletes who are are impacted have to had to flood flee the country some of the top swimmers in the world actually um uh, you know are are ukrainian swimmers um there's some really good ones that have had to just you know um have been disrupted by this uh it's a real shame and uh hate to see it certainly hard is with all of those um athletes families etc uh can we just have peace already it's, it's hey, ridiculous man. Amen. I, I would echo that. Look, I appreciate you take, sharing those thoughts, actually, and that sentiment and wonderful perspective. But I appreciate you taking the time. Got to wrap up this episode. I want to tell you, though, I know how important they are to you. Go Braves. Let's get the job done and get it back to Atlanta. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let's get it done. Go Braves. Our producer, Jake Barton in Noonan, Georgia. From our guest, Brian Lundquist in San Francisco, California. I'm Tony Jones in Auburn, Alabama. We'll see you next time here on Talking with Tony.